but communal laments. A lot of these are individual, but communal laments bewail Israel's misfortunes and urge God's vengeance upon Israel's oppressors, sometimes reminding God of his historic relationship with Israel and his covenantal obligations. Let me just finish by reading Psalm 74 as a case in point. It makes explicit reference to the destruction of the sanctuary, so it's clearly post-exilic. And as a response to the catastrophe, it gives expression to despair and bewilderment and even anger that God has forgotten his obligations to Israel. Why, O oh God, do you forever reject us? Do you fume in anger at the flock that you tend? Remember the community you made yours long ago, your very own tribe that you redeemed, Mount Zion, where you dwell. Bestir yourself because of the perpetual tumult, all the outrages of the enemy in the sanctuary. Your foes roar inside your meeting place. They take their signs for true signs. It's like men wielding axes against a gnarled tree with hatchet and pike. They hacked away at its carved work. They made your sanctuary go up in flames. They brought low in dishonor the dwelling place of your presence. They resolved, let us destroy them altogether. They burned all God's tabernacles in the land. No signs appear for us. There is no longer any prophet, no one among us who knows for how long, Till when, O oh God, will the enemy forever revile your name? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Draw it out of your bosom. Do not deliver your dove to the wild beast. Do not ignore forever the band of your lowly ones. Look to the covenant. Rise, O oh God, champion your cause. The psalmist is bewildered. Why has this happened? Why doesn't God act? There's no mention of Israel's sin. There's no indication that the destruction was just punishment. And Psalm 44, which we'll start with next time, goes even further and states flatly that the people haven't sinned. It's God who's been faithless.